Thanks very much. Uh, hemochromatosis is a condition characterized by iron overload uh, with iron deposition in many of the major organs of the body. Um, it's due to uh, mutations which damage the control of iron absorption from the gut, resulting in a very slow accumulation of excess iron. It presents clinically with severe fatigue, chronic pain, arthritis, which often starts early and becomes widespread, diabetes, liver disease, which can progress to cirrhosis and liver cancer, and each year there are a number of early deaths uh, from age 40 and over. Um, Ernest Hemingway is one of the famous people who've had this condition and several members of his family also had it. The wonderful thing about hemochromatosis is the treatment's incredibly easy. All I have to do is give blood. Blood is very rich in iron and uh, once the accumulation of iron has got rid of, uh, they only need to donate blood four or five times a year to keep iron levels down, and the blood can actually be used for transfusions for other people. The problem, however, is many of these people are diagnosed very late after irreversible damage has been done. The main mutation involved in European ancestry populations is the so-called C282Y mutation. Um, it is the most common single gene mutation in Europe. Uh, the allele frequency in UK Biobank is about 7.3 and incredibly close to other UK studies like Elspach and Twins UK. In the European descent subsample in Biobank, there are 2,890 homozygotes. The homozygotes are the ones, that's a double mutation, are the ones that are really high risk for the organ damage. And um, this is very much a northern and western European disease, so the carrier rates are much higher in north and west Europe. And as you can see, the UK and Ireland are very much hot spots for this mutation. The uh, overall pe uh, prevalence is about one in 156 people in the UK, 350,000 people prob probably, very close to the previous largest study of hemochromatosis in the UK, which was in 10,000 people in Wales. Uh, in January this year, we published the baseline associations with this and a second minor mutation and some of the smaller effect variants in the BMJ. And to cut a long story short, the male homozygotes were roughly, uh, well, over four times more likely to have any sort of liver disease diagnosis and over 12 over twice as likely to have osteoporosis or osteoarthritis, about 50% more likely to have diabetes, and there were a few other associations as well. Uh, the associations are much weaker in women. The iron levels in women are lower, probably because of menstruation. Um, thanks to the update of the hospital records in Biobank recently, we're now able to examine incident rates, hazard ratios for those major diseases separately. So taking out the people reporting these problems at baseline. And again, we have very substantial excess risks of diabetes, osteoarthritis, liver disease, and liver cancer in the male homozygotes compared to people without this mutation. The association with osteoarthritis has become significant in the women, and these associations are robust to all sorts of quality checks. The big question with this mutation, with the hemochromatosis mutation, is what the penetrance is. And previous estimates of penetrance have varied from as low as less than 1% in community surveys up to 50% in family 
and hospital studies. Well, uh, using the same kind of cumulative diagnosis graphs that you've seen, we now have about 25% of the male homozygotes diagnosed uh, with hemochromatosis and about 12, 13% of the women. And that's extraordinarily similar to the data that came out a few years ago from the eMERGE uh, analysis of uh, hospital medical system, seven medical system biobanks across the US. And of course, the American data suggests that the penetrance goes even higher um, at very advanced stages. Um, the big worry with Biobank, of course, is that it's not population representative. So we have compared the overall rates of any hemochromatosis diagnosis to an equivalent subgroup in the NHS health records for England. So this is whole population. Uh, there's no linkage between the individuals or anything. It's just the overall totals. And we find that the baseline rates of diagnosis, irrespective of genotype, are very similar in women. And uh, the incident rates are very similar in women between the NHS records and Biobank. And in men, there is an excess of, of people with hemochromatosis already diagnosed taking part. But on reasonable assumptions, the um, difference it would make would only be three or four percentage points on that estimate. Uh, the incident data looks very similar to the full population-based HES records. Uh, another key issue with hemochromatosis is people have argued that we shouldn't screen and look for this condition because there didn't seem to be excess mortality. And that is true of the heterozygotes um, they are virtually identical to people without this mutation, but the homozygotes do seem to have a sustained excess mortality, not huge, 1.22. Um, and again, this is robust to removing people who are diagnosed with hemochromatosis at baseline. Um, this brings us to a point where we can really think about eradicating this excess clinical morbidity because we know that removing that excess iron through blood donation is effective if it is started early. Is it a big problem? Well, um, we did a separate analysis of the older sample in Biobank, 60 to 70 year olds. In the men, 1.5% of all the frail older people, older men, were C2A2Y homozygotes. 1.6% of all the hip replacements across all ages in the men in Biobank were, had this uh, double mutation and 5.8% of all the liver cancers were in this group. And uh, we're really getting, thanks to Biobank, to understanding the natural history. We've got good clinical tests to find these people. We've got a good intervention if we could start early. And we really need to start thinking about piloting uh, early diagnosis and maybe even population screening and adding iron and, H and the HFE mutations to the routine health screenings. Biobank is helping us extend this extraordinarily, understanding the additional genetic variants that modify penetrance. Uh, the brain and liver MRI is imaging the excess iron in these people. The DEXA of the joints is showing us what the joint damage looks like. We've got more details on the liver enzyme results. And even the humble full blood count is showing us, is validating a claimed iron overload indicator so that we could actually identify these people in clinical practice by this iron overload signature. Thanks again to the participants of Biobank and the team, uh, the wonderful analysts who've worked on this and the MRC for funding it. Thanks very much.